so we're going to try and look at using vector to create UI. Um, so the, the temptation might be when you start doing UI is to go, right, I can do this all in sort of basically paint. I mean, I can draw this rhomboid shape and I can fill it in, you know, using the paint, the paint fill, you know, paint bucket. And yeah, it's possible, but you're going to come up against things like this quite, quite often. And then you can come in and, you know, clean them up with the marquee tool. And, but you know that this is going to become very tedious to try and get pixel precision with bitmap art. You're going to find a lot of the time you're going to be tweaking around at the pixel level. And then someone will say, um, can you make it a little bit smaller? Uh, you'll be like, okay, I can make it smaller, no problem. Maybe you make it a smart object. That probably would have been better, because otherwise, when you make it bigger again, <coughs> you've lost all that fidelity. Slightly better if you've made it a smart object. You can then scale it, and it won't pixelate quite as badly, but basic rule do I keep it vector where you can if not keep it smart object because you're going to be scaling and rescaling moving things around a lot you don't want to lose quality so let's make a basic button it's, it's got the 10 pixels rounding on there I didn't want that so you can obviously manipulate this in various ways you can just use the white arrow down here direct selection tool to select the points and using the as soon as you start to edit that it's going to say I'm going to turn it away from being a live shape that means you won't be able to edit the corners and things like that anymore so if you wanted to have control of the corners do that now before you start editing it um, like this moving these things around then you you know you won't be able to edit those corners again um, and obviously it's sort of this one I want to just show you make a simple rhomboid by selecting the two top points with the direct selection arrow holding shift and dragging yes okay the other way to do it I'm just going to start again with a new rectangle there rectangle tool drag that out get rid of my corners seem to be defaulting to 10 pixels there annoyingly this doesn't seem to do anything. I think that might affect the the new rectangle. So if I put like 20 in there and draw another rectangle, it comes up, but it doesn't seem to affect the current selection. It's a little bit misleading. So I've got my new rectangle here, and I hit Control T or go to Edit Transform wherever it is, Free Transform, and then I get these options up here in my bar. I don't know where they'll be on your install. Um, yeah, maybe if you full screen it will give you different options there. Uh, this one's handy, horizontal. So I can say right, minus 33 there and it will put me on a nice slant. Maybe I want a 45 degree slant there. And yes, it will. It will. Well, that's annoying. <laughs> My Photoshop's glitching out somewhat. Okay, so we've got the shape. I can press the P tool, pen tool, and then I can get rid of that stroke. I don't want that stroke. But maybe we're going to have three of these buttons. Um, let's just say there's going to be three of them running down centrally. Um, but I, I might want to do some work on just one first. So. Let's just say you apply some layer styles, but let's add a stroke. I know we just removed a real stroke, but this gives us different options. An inside stroke and a little... Well, let's do the stroke with the, the shape instead. Okay, let's make it 4 pixels and let's make it sit on the inside here. Alignment, let's sit, it in, sit on the inside of the shape. Cool. Now let's add, I'm going to just put this on a darker background colour, put everything on a darker background colour, I think. And I'm going to lock the background. 
so the advantage effect to one of the advantages is I can change the color of that now. A bit of a lighter gray. Annoyingly it only shows when you hit OK. That's really something that Photoshop should sort out. It's quite annoying because you can't preview the color. Double click on the layer to bring up the layer styles. Pop an inner shadow on it. Ramp that up. Turn it down. Maybe give us a little bit of definition on there. Do the same with the inner glow. Pop that up, turn it down. So with the inner shadow now I can angle it source. Maybe the light source is up here. Anyway, you can do whatever you want here. If we want to keep it keep it simple, it's still nice to have a subtle gradient. This is not so subtle. <laughs> Let's find a, a basic black and white. underneath and they make a little bit more sense if you've if you've got a light source, a sort of virtual light source. Too much and it looks rounded, um, but a little bit and it looks flat but just having a bit of light interaction. So say that's the style you might want to go for. As I said you can always easily change the colours. On it is, is the faster way. Obviously, hitting P and going this way, as I said, it doesn't preview the colors beforehand, so it might be advantageous to just double click. That's definitely a nicer way to do it. Not consistent though, which is again slightly annoying. I'm going to make the outside white, I'm going to bump it up. We don't want to be subtle with this button. Cool, then you might want to hit state on that button, so let's say lighter colour and maybe get rid of the stroke on that one it just goes down to two or something. Now that doesn't work. Um, what would the stroke do? Maybe the stroke can just fade to a very light so that could be the hovered, that could be the pressed and then the normal state could just not have a, a stroke at all. So you've got normal, highlighted as it were, or hovered, and pressed. So you just always think of your three or more states of a button. on your settings of your rulers here you can get your smart guides up I think it's in view show smart guides these little purple readouts will help you space things perfectly obviously you can group your layers keep it nice and organized you should probably name those, you know, buttons. Now the temptation here might want, you might want to think, oh, I'll do it all as a smart object, and you could, but quite often you'll want different labels on, on the buttons, so that's not always great. If you want to change them, it makes it trickier if they're a smart object, you need to duplicate and things. Oh, 
options. Okay, so I've obviously seen that I ideally want a consistent font size. I'd probably make these scalable fields if, in the UI, but for now I want to keep them. Just because I can't think of anything else, this can just be qu quit, quits. <laughs> um, and that's what I mean by using a shape layer. Um, you can see, you zoom in, it's still pixelated, but I'm at 1740% there. There are ways to clean that up even more, to align edges and things, sometimes sharpens things up. Not with a rhomboid shape. Cool, I hope that helps.